Hello, my friends. I see some of you in there saying, I made it. Yes, you did. You made it. You're here. We're so glad that you're here. We're so glad you're joining us, that you're here for a little bit of, you know, Swag Bucks Live, some trivia. It's Friday Eve. All the Friday presents are under the Friday tree, and everybody's going to rush down the stairs Friday morning and open them. Do you open one of your Friday presents on Friday Eve? I know some families do that. We didn't. We always waited until Friday. You know, Friday Eve, we'd have dinner. We'd relax together. Of course, we'd go to bed early because we knew when we woke up, it would be Friday. Maybe the greatest day of the week after Saturday. Saturday's got to be number one, right? What's your favorite day of the week, everybody? Let us know. Let's, let's, let's talk about that. So nice to have you here. I love everybody checking in, saying where they are in the world. Welcome to every single one of you, wherever you are. We got people who love Monday. That's great. The anti-Garfield. That's what I, that's what I would call you. Cheery and optimistic because that's the beginning of the week. Saturday, Friday. Yes, of course. Got a lot of Saturdays. Thursday's your favorite. Is that because you grew up watching must-see TV when all the good programming was on? Or is it just that feeling of like, all right, now we're getting into it. The weekend's almost here. There's that excitement. I talk about it all the time because I just love it. I love that Thursday feeling. I can't help it. <coughs> I refuse it. I will not hide my light under a bushel. You're not supposed to do that. That is what they say. Folks, what's hello? Tuesday. No expectations on Tuesday. That is a great reason to love Tuesdays. What a great answer. Thank you for that. Thank you very much. Sunday lovers. Yes, Sunday also a wonderful day. But I'll tell you what, people, you know what time it is. It's time for the Thursday edition of Swag Bucks Live, the mobile game show where you win money from the comfort of your phone. You have an opportunity to use your brains to line your pockets via today's grand prize, which is $1,000. Take a look at it right there. Everyone who can correctly answer these 10 multiple choice trivia questions will split it. Even if you don't get a piece of that grand prize, don't fret. Even if you're eliminated, you can still earn bonus SP for every single question you get right after question number one. Now, in that case, if you've been eliminated and you're earning bonus SP, which is great, I support that, just remember that you have to claim those SP at the end of the game in order to add them to your account. Otherwise, they go away. Claiming is as simple as clicking a, a, a single button. It shows up. You click it. Boom. They're in your account. But I'll tell you what. I'll make a deal with you. If you are a grand prize winner today, then the bonus SP you earn, we'll just roll those right into your share of that $1,000 grand prize. No claiming necessary. Now, this is a second chance week. The image on your phone should have told you. What does that mean? I will tell you what it means. It means that you are getting three free rejoins just for playing this game, just like you did for every other game you played this week, just like you will get if you come back tomorrow at 3 p.m. Eastern Time, noon Pacific Time for our Friday Flash game. Now, the rejoins you earn each day get credited before the next game begins. So the rejoins you earn for this game right now that you're playing, you will have them before tomorrow's Friday Flash game. Now, the comments, they are so five minutes ago. So they're going to take a hike. While we get to your warm-up, here is question number one. Which of the following is not the title of one of Aesop's fables? Is it the Ants and the Grasshopper, the Wolf and His Shadow, or Rizzoli and Isles? One of those is not one of Aesop's fables. Which one is it? Among the many lessons that Ace folded into his tales, he forgot to include anything about TNT cop shows from the 2010s. Rizzoli and Isles, that is not... One of Aesop's fables, 75% of you getting that one right, but 20% of you going with the ants and the grasshopper, that is about the value of hard work. And, and it is uh, demonstrated, Disney did a version of it where the grasshopper says, Oh, the world owed me a living. Do, 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 do. The world owes me a living. Do, 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 do. I mean, so the ants are working, he's not working at all, then the winter comes, he has no food, but the ants share with him, and he learns that if he works hard, he'll be able to eat later, and that is the the general lesson that is the moral of the story of the ants and the grasshopper. But I'll tell you what, of the people who got eliminated, almost all of you coming right back in, we still have almost 31,000 people in grand prize contention. I'll take that. In fact, we're over 31,000 at this point. Over 32,000 of you in the game in total. And from here on out, all 32,000 
240 plus of you will earn one SB for every question you get right, no matter what. So stick around. Here comes question number two, worth one bonus SB if you get it right. Pinto, Garbanzo, and Great Northern are types of what? Is it chips, beans, or milk? Pinto, Garbanzo, and Great Northern are all types of what? They're an excellent source of both protein and fiber, making them an ideal part of any balanced diet. They're all types of beans, folks. Beans! Oh, I love beans! 99% of you getting that one right. That's over 30,270 of you, to be precise. And everybody who got eliminated is coming back in, too. Probably because you have free rejoins from all the other games you played this week and you have the opportunity. You haven't used one yet. Even though we lost a lot of people on question one, a lot of those people still in the game. Remember, you can rejoin once per game. Hopefully nobody has to do it just yet. This is a tougher game. But we're going to move on right now to question number three, worth one bonus SB if you get it right. According to Superstition, it's unlucky when what animal crosses your path? Is it a black cat, a manatee, or an ostrich? Unlucky when what animal crosses your path? These superstitions can give things like ladders and these animals a bad rap. You can feel confident that adopting a black cat will not bring you any bad luck no matter where it is walking. Black cat is the answer, 99% of you getting that one right. In fact, closer to 99.5% of you. So almost everybody still in grand prize contention got that one right. I'm guessing most of the people in here got that one right. So let's move on to question number four worth one bonus SP if you get it right. Here it is. Four of the ten largest statues in the world are of what figure? Is it Jesus, Buddha, or Alexander the Great? Super tall statues, who are they of? Four out of ten of them. Many of the biggest statues are pretty old, too, so of course a good number of them are some form of one of the oldest deities. The answer is Buddha. Four of the ten largest, tallest statues in the world are of Buddha. There's one of... of uh, of a, of a freedom fighter. There are a few others that none of them are statues of Jesus. You would think that giant one in Brazil would be in the top 10, but apparently it is not. 73% of you getting that one right, though. Well done, knowing these statues are probably from all over the world. And uh, Buddhism is a very popular religion and certainly was in ancient history as well. So it would stand to reason that some of those ancient statues would be a Buddha. Well done. Way to reason that one out. Of the 27% of you, who were eliminated, most of you coming right back in, still over 27,900 of you in grand prize contention. As we move on to question number five, almost halfway done with this game, this question is worth one bonus SB to anyone who gets it right. Here it is. The first Girl Scout cookies were homemade. Which chapter was the first to sell commercially baked cookies? Was it Greater Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Muskogee, Illinois, uh, Oklahoma, or Chicago, Illinois? Which chapter the first to sell commercially baked cookies? Well, the first batches of Girl Scout cookies were baked locally by the chapters until this enterprising group decided to get them commercially baked. And now they're all doing it. So tip of the hat to the Greater Philadelphia, Pennsylvania chapter. Philadelphia is the answer. 26% of you getting that one right. 62% of you going with Muskogee, Oklahoma. I'm sorry, that is incorrect. But that means, oh my goodness. We have 74% of you who have a chance, an opportunity now to rejoin. You can do that using 1SB, or you can do it with a free rejoin if you have one from this week, and I'm guessing you do already. Over half of the people eliminated have come back in. But it's true, a lot of innovations coming out of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, including commercially baked Girl Scout cookies. And hey, brilliant idea. Well done. Tip of the hat to you. We now have... Still over 18,600 people in grand prize contention. That number is actually continuing to rise mightily. So let's give it just a second and think about your favorite Girl Scout cookies. The Girl, Girl Scout cookies right now not being sold anymore, but a lot of online sales happening. I bought them online uh, when they were on sale as a way to support. And now I have all these boxes of Girl Scout cookies that are unopened. And I have a while to, you know, you get a while with them, but I just look over and think, Someday, someday I will eat all of these boxes of Girl Scout cookies. All right, folks, I think we're about ready to move on to question number six. We are halfway through the game. Let us head into the back five right now with question number six, worth one bonus SB if you get it right. What decade is commonly referred to as roaring? Is it the 20s, the 40s, or the 60s? 
Just put roaring in between the and the number. See which one sounds right to you. It was the era that gave birth to jazz music, saw the rise of the flappers, talkies, and pre-depression debauchery. That's why it was called the Roaring Twenties. The Roaring Twenties, of course, that is the answer. 93% of you getting that one right, going, Oh, my dear, I got that one right. Da -da 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 -da. That's an original recording from the Twenties. They were actually recording songs about Swagbucks Live back then. How did they know? How did they know? Let's move on to question number seven, worth one bonus SB. If you get it right, here it is. Sneasel, fiefle, and flink drinking are all terms that refer to what? Being drunk, passing gas, or snow? Sneasel, fiefle, and flink drinking. What do they refer to? There are over 400 words for this in the Scottish language, and they all refer to slightly different kinds of snowfall. Snow is the answer. 61% of you getting that one right. Well done. Not an easy question. We've definitely asked about how many words the Scottish have for snow. We've never talked about what those words are. Now, you know three of them, Sneasel, Fiefel, and Flink Drinking. And they're all different kinds of snow. So there are so many different, there are 400 different kinds of snowfall, at least that we know of. That's what I'm getting from all of this. But of the 39% of you who were eliminated, about a third of you coming back in, still over 12,500 of you in grand prize contention, only three questions between you and the $1,000 grand prize. So let's move on to question number eight, worth one bonus SB. If you get it right, here it is. John Hughes got the title Pretty in Pink from a song by what band? Is it Velvet Underground, Blondie, or the Psychedelic Furs? What band inspired Pretty in Pink? It's one of the quintessential John Hughes movies, and the title comes directly off a track from Talk, 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 a 1981 album by The Psychedelic Furs. That is the answer. 10,442 of you getting that one right. That is 84% of the grand prize players left. Well done. That was our last difficult question. These are not easy games, these Thursday games, but I'm impressed that almost a third of the people who started the game are still in it. Well done to you. Let us move on to our second to last question. With one bonus SB to all 31,000 plus of you still playing this game, here is question number nine. Which US city is home to the Space Needle? Is it New York, Boise, or Seattle? Or my voice cracking? Which US city? That's what it sounded like. I know, I heard it. I, I said it. It was built for the 1962 World's Fair and is the most prominent and recognizable part of its city skyline. You can find it right in the heart of Seattle. Seattle is the answer. 10,497 of you have made it this far and you are ready for our final question. And if you had fun playing this game, you know what I'm going to tell you to do. Tell your friends about it. Post to social media with the hashtag SBLive and include your share link which you can find after the game by clicking the invite or get more rejoins button in the main menu of this app. If people sign up with it, you will get a free rejoin, just like the three free rejoins you're getting just for playing this game. Also, I've got a great mobile banking solution for you to check out. It's called Chime, and when you sign up, you get a Chime Visa debit card, a spending account, and an optional savings account. By signing up through Swagbucks, you'll earn 12,500 SB when your first direct deposit comes into your account. You have to be a U.S. player to take advantage of this offer, but please check it out after the game. Be responsible with your money and make money while doing it. Okay, here's the deal. 10,499 people vying for a piece of our $1,000 grand prize. We've got over 31,300 of you total still in the app. Each of you can earn yourselves one more bonus SB by correctly answering our final question. Here's question number 10. Dark rooms are used to develop what? Photographs, business ideas, or chest hair? What do you develop in a dark room? Photographs, business ideas, or chest hair? If you try to develop them in the light, they become overexposed. You need the controlled light of a dark room to properly develop your photographs. Photographs is the answer. 10,318 of you knew that one, and you are splitting our grand prize. Congratulations to you for picking up the victory in a difficult game. Each of you 
taking home 10 SB and grand prize money plus the bonuses you earned along the way. Antoine Johnson, 34, you are a winner. Warrior 306, you're bang, you're breaking down the walls of heartache. Bang, bang, you are the warrior. And Eva Stevens, eight, and golden treasures. You just found your way to a golden treasure, didn't you, my friend? You are all among our grand prize winners. Congratulations to every single one of you. Congratulations to those of you who earned bonus SB, stuck around in the game, and claimed them just now. You know what to do now that you have all these new SB in your account? You redeem them for PayPal cash or gift cards to Amazon, Starbucks, Target, and hundreds of other places. You've done a great job all week long. Your rejoins will be to you shortly. Come back tomorrow for our Friday Flash game, 3 p.m. Eastern Time, noon Pacific Time, to get another three free rejoins. Thank you for playing Swagbucks Live, and we will see you then.